Got this Dell monitor a friend found in the trash. Pretty sure I know what's wrong with it. Let's see. All right. Looks like the screen came on for a little bit. I heard the inverters kick in. And then I heard the inverter shut off. So... <clears throat> Pretty sure it's going to be some bad capacitors. Let's take this apart. First thing we're going to do is take the stand off. There's a button underneath here. You push on, then you can pull this off. There's a button. And this is an E176FPB. You got to take these four screws out. Right, the four screws are out. Now you need to flip it up like this. And then there's little notches right there right there that you can barely see uh, you just need to get a screwdriver under it pop it up there we go got that to pop up there's also one here in the middle pop out and pop that out and then just kind of keep going around the edge of the frame here alright so you can see there was a notch here 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 and here then you can get a screwdriver into to start popping this frame out so you can just start pulling around be a little careful with this side here because you got your controls And there's a ribbon cable that's connecting the controls to that, so it's uh, just go around it here and pulling it out. Okay, now that should remove this back part from the monitor. Separated. Set that back down there. So with your back cover off, you need to take your button here and the spring out so you don't lose it. Get to the guts of the monitor. Uh, you gotta get this cover off. And then pull these plugs. Gotta remember the configuration. You know, you got the pink white. Then the black blue, and then the black blue, and then the pink white. So just wiggle them and pull until they unplug. Just be careful not to nick them on in any of the uh, sharp edges. There we go. Alright, and there's a ribbon cable you need to get out here. There's a little tab you just need to get your fingernail under, the white tab. Flip it up. The ribbon cable comes out, you can pull this back. The ribbon cable unplugged and this pulled off. Now you need to take the front cover off and just go ahead and continue to pull this ribbon cable off since it's uh, part of the control buttons on the front. And now that should allow us to completely remove this from the front. There's some tabs that clip on here to hold it to the uh, monitor. Just lift up on those. The other side just came off on its own. Okay, now there's four screws that we need to take off. And there's one here and one here. And then on the other side there's two. One here and one here. And we'll take those off and then we can get to, to this. Alright, got those four screws off. Now we need to lift it up gently because there is a ribbon cable holding it to the screen. So I'm lifting it up this way. As you can see there's some tape and a uh, bundle of wires there that goes to this plug here. Now as far as this assembly goes, we don't need it fully disconnected. Let's just leave it like this. Go ahead and just flip it over. We can get what we need without unplugging it. So this 
board right here is what we're trying to get to. I'm going to take these four screws out. One, two, three, four. I'm also going to go ahead and take these two screws out. And then I also need to take these two standoffs out. So I had a very hard time pulling this up. And the reason was this uh, heat sink under here was adhered to the this protective cover pretty good. Um, but anyway, to get this board out, get all the screws, there's this plastic tab here that you gotta squeeze together. And and then pull the board up. Why are you doing this? There we go. And then I I had to just pry really hard right here with these two fingers um, on both sides of this heat sink in order to get it to break loose. Alright, so here's your board. Now I can disconnect this one from it. <clears throat> and then all that's left is the uh, power cord. I'm going to unplug that from it right there. squeeze that that locking tab and then it's out all right so it's as I expected it has the bad capacitor disease on the power supply board here and you got this one so we got one two three four five that are bad that you can see so I'm going to replace those and then also this one because it's the same brand and then it should be good. Okay, so I'm going to have to replace two 1000 microfarad 16 volt capacitors and four, one, two, three, four, 470 microfarad 35 volt capacitors. All right, got the new capacitors in, got the board put back in. Um, I don't have the back cover on yet, but uh, let's plug it in and see if it works first. Fantastic. Looks good. It's not shutting off for no reason now. And uh, I think we're good to go. Make sure you do not forget to put that button in. And then put the everything back together and then clip this on. Because without that button, it is almost impossible to get this thing out. Um, I had to take a flathead screwdriver, shove it down in that hole in order to get that latch to finally let this go. So, just a word of warning.